can you get pregnant while breastfeeding? And can you breastfeed if you're doing fertility treatments? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI, so I'm a fertility doctor. And today I want to break down for you everything it is that you need to know about trying to get pregnant or breastfeeding or fertility treatments or trying to not get pregnant when you're breastfeeding. Essentially, understanding how breastfeeding can impact your fertility. What's really important to know is that you absolutely can get pregnant even if you're exclusively breastfeeding even though it's not very common. So if you're exclusively breastfeeding a baby that is less than six months old, which means you are providing the only source of nutrition for that child, and pumping is a little bit different because you might be pumping at different times. Specifically, if you're feeding the child exclusively through breastfeeding, we know there's a less than a 5% chance that you're gonna get pregnant. And this is because something called lactational amenorrhea. What this means is the hormone that causes you to lactate or to make milk is called prolactin. Prolactin is made from the pituitary gland, and prolactin is a very interesting hormone. Remember that the pituitary gland hangs down from an area in the brain, it's almost like a punching bag hanging from the wall. And different areas of the pituitary gland make different hormones. And when one area is being stimulated, other areas don't get as much of the blood supply. And so we don't see as much hormone happening in that area. So what happens? is when you are breastfeeding and the prolactin area is really working over time, what's next door to that? The gonadotrope area. Gonadotropes are LH and FSH. So as prolactin raises and these cells get really active, these cells do not. So you no longer send out LH and FSH, therefore you're not ovulating. And that's what contributes to lactational amenorrhea. What is so interesting is you can also have prolactin when you're not breastfeeding from a variety of other causes. Some of them can be from medication use, from the time of day that you exercise, from nipple stimulation. You can also have an uh, elevation of prolactin because you could have something called a prolactinoma, which is actually just a little tumor, a non-cancerous tumor, but a tumor in that area of the pituitary gland that is causing over-secretion of prolactin. But when that happens, the same lactational amenorrhea occurs. And you might even notice breast discharge, but your period pattern is distinctly going to change. And there was a great study that showed that as your prolactin rose, your period had a very specific change in its regulatory pattern. So if a normal period is regular, predictable, coming every four-ish weeks, when you had the first rise of prolactin, so that first little bump, you started to see actually cycles that were closer together. And what's so interesting is that the luteal phase started to get shorter. So instead of your, for example, 28 day cycles, suddenly now your cycles are every 24 days. And that four day difference is happening out of the luteal phase. So instead of having a 14 day luteal phase, now you're having a 10 day. So having a luteal phase defect. If you've heard me talk about ovulation, we often think about ovulation as something that is yes, no, you ovulate or you don't. I actually view the world as you have stages of ovulatory dysfunction. And this prolactin example is such a good one to help you understand it. So as your prolactin rises, first step, first stage of ovulatory dysfunction, a shortening of your luteal phase. Now, as your prolactin gets a little bit higher, suddenly now you're gonna to start to see longer cycles, spaced out cycles, it's taking you longer to get to ovulation. So now you see an irregular pattern. And as it gets even higher than that, you see absolute amenorrhea or lack of all period. So we see this change through the ovulatory stages, regular, short with a short luteal, longer and irregular, and then absent as prolactin rises. And so when you're breastfeeding and your prolactin is living up here, what is happening is that constant suckling is causing a decrease in the release of FSH and LH to the point that you're not ovulating. So if you're not ovulating, you're not getting pregnant. There was a study done that showed that if you are feeding your baby, the baby's suckling three times per day, that that is probably enough to cause lactational amenorrhea or prevent ovulation in 95% of people. So if you are wanting to get pregnant and still feeding your baby a lot, and you're at this stage where you're, maybe you're not ready to give that up, 
think about trying to decrease the number of feedings, presumably if you're past the six month mark and your child has another source of nutrition as well. Now, realistically, especially as an OBGYN, I don't want you getting pregnant within six months anyway. I want your uterus to heal up. I want your body to get back. So I think that's a nice way of nature, trying to put a little bit of required space between our pregnancies. And trust me, my kids are close together. I see patients all the time who are trying to catch up in their reproductive potential. So I get it. But your uterus gets really big and I've got to heal back up. And if you have a C-section, you might need to heal that even more. So how long, if you're breastfeeding, does it usually take you to get your period back? Because when somebody says to me they want to get pregnant, they're breastfeeding, my first thing will be, well, the number one thing you can do is to stop breastfeeding. And that's true. With breastfeeding, the average return to ovulation is going to be somewhere between that six to 12 month interval. Meaning once you're introducing another nutrition supply to the child, now you're going to see a little bit of a decrease in that prolactin exposure, and that might help you start to ovulate. Again, your body's going to reverse through those stages. And even in that study, when they treated these people with cabergoline, which is a medication to decrease prolactin, we saw a reversal through those stages too before you got back to regularity. So even if you might ovulate, it might be irregular, you then might have short luteal phase. So it might take a while, and I would anticipate it would, to get back to that normal range. So is time to pregnancy and is infertility higher in people who are breastfeeding? Yes. Now, if you're doing fertility treatments, how do we feel about that? Clomid actually decreases prolactin. So if you're talking about Clomid or Clomid IUI and you're breastfeeding, most people are going to say no, because if you're wanting to breastfeed, we don't want that to now no longer be possible for you because of a medication we took. Also, some medications can be passed through breast milk and are not going to be great for your baby. We also know that prolactin, when it's higher, even if you're ovulating, can cause a thinning of the uterine lining. Does that increase the risk of an abnormal placenta or of a miscarriage or a failed implantation? That's a reason why when you're talking about IVF, so most people who are doing IVF won't do it while you're still breastfeeding. Most of the time, this is because of medication passed through into the breast milk, but also because a lot of the medications we use might stop some of your milk and you might not be ready for them. We also don't want to compromise on your outcome. So if you're doing an embryo transfer and you don't have many embryos, we see that patients who are breastfeeding have a thinner lining, more fluid in their lining, more canceled cycles, and lower implantation rates. So I tell my patients, I want you to give this baby everything you can. The one that's in your arms, the one that you're breastfeeding. But I want you to be done with that phase before we move on to the next transfer. Your embryos are frozen. They're fine. We don't need to be rushing to get to that stage and compromising one child's outcome to just get to a transfer, especially if our chance of that transfer succeeding might be lower. Now, everybody's different. So can you get pregnant with breastfeeding? Can you fall in the 5% if it's in those first six months? Absolutely. So lactational amenorrhea is not contraception. Remember, you will ovulate before you get your first period. And OPKs are less reliable in people who are breastfeeding as well. So you need another method to prevent pregnancy if you're not ready to get pregnant yet because ovulation will occur before you have that first period. So this is one of those places where it might be less likely, but it's not impossible. And understanding why and how breastfeeding actually impacts our brain's hormones. So of course we want our brain and our ovary, we want our hormones to be balanced, we want everything working perfectly. So if you're trying to get pregnant, we want the uterine lining as thick as possible. We want a great luteal phase. We want that next placenta to have the highest chance that it can. So even though you can get pregnant when you're breastfeeding, I'm of the opinion that it shouldn't be something that you're purposefully trying to do, especially if you're doing fertility treatments. Hope this helped answer some questions. As always, I'm so thankful for having you here. Please subscribe and follow along on the channel. And you can always check out the As a Woman podcast for more information. Thanks, friends.